Ladies and gentlemen, we are live at Kampala International University in Kansanga. You're very welcome for our 23rd graduation ceremony that is happening and coming live to you through Urban Television and our social media pages. We are happy to have you and we hope that you'll have a great time with us here at KIU and we congratulate all those students and, and parents who are going to be awarded degrees and who are graduating today. We are so happy and so excited uh, to be here and to be having this graduation ceremony. So I'll be your host today. My name is Janice, uh, coming live to you from Kansanga, and uh, I will take you through the program of what will happen today, and then we hit, get it over and done. So first, we are going to have the Chancellor's procession, uh, which will be led by Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. Muhammad Pezamhigo, he lead the, the procession and when they come in, we shall all stand up and sing the national anthem, the East African anthem and the KIU anthem. And then we'll have a prayer from our students leader. And then after that, we shall go through the constitution of the congregation. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
yetu Uzalendo pia mshikamano Iwe msingi wa umoja wetu Na tulinde uhuru na amani Mila zetu na desuri zetu Kampala International University My name is Mohinda Shila Hosanna, a student of social work and social administration, bachelor's degree, and the college MP, humanities and social sciences. I'm going to be leading you in a prayer for today. Let us humble ourselves for a short prayer. Father, in the splendor of your majesty, yet again we come before you today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that we are gathered here to celebrate the 23rd graduation of this great institution, Kampala International University. We thank you for this great milestone you have enabled us to achieve. We thank you for enabling these, your children, reach this peak of the academic journey, Lord Father. We thank you, Father, for the team of dedicated and committed lecturers, administrators, and above all, the Board of Trustees. We thank you, loving Father. We request you, loving Father, to forgive us our iniquities because we are human and we run short of your glory. Gracious and loving God, we place these graduates into your mighty and able hands. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love guided by your light so that we, they, may, they may use their talents and knowledge they've acquired at these great institutions to solve the problems of this world. May what they've learned at this institution allow them to truly be women and men for others. May they continue to explore the heights even outside of these gates. May they be great ambassadors of Kampala International University. Open doors of opportunities for them, dear Lord, so that their hard work may not be in vain. Bless each and everyone who is in this place and those watching live from the places of their comfort. In the mighty name of God, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 
our dear viewers, our intending graduates, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I already said, we are at Kampala International University for our 23rd virtual graduation ceremony, and you're very welcome. Now, for those who are at home or who are on your laptops and your phones and would like to follow us, we are streaming live on different channels. One, we are streaming live on urban television, so you can reach that uh, and make sure that you don't miss anything. And on the social media pages, we are live at KIUVersity, where you can reach us on Twitter. And on YouTube, we are at KIU Digital Media. And on uh, Facebook, we are live streaming at Kampala International University, which is our Facebook page. So I really, really want to welcome you to tune in, to get data, and make sure that you don't miss anything. I want to thank Angela for that wonderful prayer, for I feel God is with us now. He's constituting with us and is congregating with us. So thank you very much. Now, before we do anything, since this is a graduation ceremony, we must have our chancellor call this uh, congregation to order and constitute it. So without further ado, I would like to invite our chancellor, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, to constitute the 23rd Congregation of Kampala International University such that we start the award ceremony. Thank you very much, and you're welcome to enjoy. Please stay tuned in. Don't go anywhere, because this is going to be very, very interesting. Thank you so much, and enjoy. Mr. Chancellor, sir. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I constitute this assembly into a congregation of Kampala International University constituted for the purpose of awarding diplomas and conferring degrees of Kampala International University. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back from the constitution of the congregation. Uh, right about now, we are going to listen to some words of wisdom. Some words of wisdom from different speakers. Like I told you, we are at Kampala International University at our virtual graduation ceremony. This is how far COVID-19 has brought us, but it has not disabled us. So for us at KIU, we are still exploring the heights, and we hope that you can do that with us. So without wasting a lot of time, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite my Vice Chancellor, the KIU Vice Chancellor, Dr. Muhammad Mpezamhigo, to address the congregation and also uh, bless our students who are graduating today. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mpezam Higo. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hello. Uh, greetings from Kampala International University. Our dear participants of the 23rd graduation function, before I proceed, I would like to remove this mask because in my neighborhood I am alone. Uh, the, uh, the audience is a distance from me. So allow me in compliance. I have the mask but I'll remove it so that I'm audible enough. Thank you for uh, your understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, our chief guest, Professor Ronald De Jong, Chairman Phillips Foundation, Honorable Cabinet and State Ministers in attendance, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies Ambassadors and High Commissioners, local and central government leaders, the Chairman and Members of the Board of Trustees, the Chancellor, Kampala International University, the KIU uh, Chairperson and Members of the University Council, our Distinguished Senate, Vice-Chancellors and Representatives of Vice-Chancellors of other universities, Deputy Vice-Chancellors and other members of the KIU management and staff, our alumni, wherever you are, distinguished international guests who are participating in this graduation and our other partners, parents, guardians and sponsors, our continuing students, and most importantly, our guests of honor, the graduates. Greetings from this university. Ladies and gentlemen, in your respective capacities, members of the press and media houses here present, 
all other stakeholders, we are here to mark the 23rd graduation function of Kampala International University. And for this reason, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to warmly welcome all of you to this 23rd graduation function, but also to note that it is the second virtual, the last one having been conducted in August of 2020. Just because of the pandemic, COVID-19, and its challenges. I warmly welcome our chief guest, Professor Ronald De Jong, the chairman, Phillips Foundation, and a retired member of the executive committee and executive vice president of Royal Phillips in the Netherlands, for which he served close to 10 years. Our Professor Ronald De Jong has been and still is a distinguished professor of practice in business, marketing, services, and innovation management at the School of Economics and Management of Tilburg University in the Netherlands. Since its inception in 2014, Philips Foundation was set up to enable lasting social change in disadvantaged communities and to enhance access to health through the application of innovation, talent, and resources. You may wish to know, ladies and gentlemen, that Africa is by far the largest beneficiary with projects of Philips aimed at enhancing health service provision, ranging from inspiring and empowering people locally, combating the non-communicable diseases in the underserved communities, deployment of latest technology and equipment, to mention but a few. You may wish to know, ladies and gentlemen, that Philips provided seed funding to Kampala International University and her other partners for the launch of the project which we announced last August, known as the Vodan Africa Project, which I'll be highlighting in a moment. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming our prestigious and honorable chief guest, Professor De Jong. You are highly welcome, and we are looking forward to listening to your words of wisdom as we celebrate this graduation. I take this opportunity to give a warm welcome to our Chancellor, Professor Mahmoud Mamdan, and thank him for his continuous support and guidance in his oversight functions of the university. I also appreciate the chairman and members of the KIU Board of Trustees for the unending support during the past month in which we had real financial constraints as staff, as parents, as other stakeholders. I remember meeting the chairman Board of Trustees, al Haji Hassan Basad Jabalaba, several times and in our discussions during the lockdown and even when it was relatively relaxed him emphasizing the fact that even if the resources are not adequate, it is important that our staff are taken care of from two aspects. We must ensure they are able to buy themselves food, but also be able to access health. So those two minimums he has fulfilled, and we really thank uh, the chairman BOT, al Haji Hassan Basad Jabalawa, and his entire board, for that humanitarian spirit. On behalf of my colleagues in the university, as the vice chancellor, I am hopeful that once the situation gets better financially, the chairman board of trustees, the university council, will be able to remobilize the resources so that the staff emoluments are reinstated as they were before the lockdown and the COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to inform you about recent awards given to our Chairman Board of Trustees. On behalf of the University Management, I wish to congratulate Al Haji Dr. Hassan Basad Jabalawa, the Chairman Board of Trustees, for, the, for these recent recognitions and awards. The Swiss School of Business and Management, based in Geneva, awarded him an honoris causa degree, which is an honorary doctorate degree in business management and leadership. In addition to the honorary doctorate, 
during a recent international summit of leaders held in April 2021 in Abuja. Alhaji Wasaja Balawa, now doctor, also received two international awards. The first one, codenamed the African Quality Award in recognition of his achievement and immense contribution to human capital development. The second was the International Outstanding Leadership Award 2020 medal in appreciation for outstanding and dedicated service to humanity and the society. Once again, congratulations, Dr. Basad Javalawa, for those lifetime achievements. You actually deserve more. On this note, I want also to warmly welcome the chairperson and members of the University Council, members of the University Senate and management, our student guild leaders, continuing students, administrative and academic staff, and all other distinguished guests. On behalf of management, I sincerely welcome you to join these gallant ladies and gentlemen who have made it and are going to be receiving their awards today. As a university, we have not been on an island coping with the COVID pandemic disruptions. Most of the disruptions are obvious and are felt by the community. Our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdown, followed by the phased and staggered reopening of educational institutions, KIU as a university, as a forward-looking university has lived through and gained a new experience. We would like to uh, heartily state our gratitude to His Excellency the President and the Government of the Republic of Uganda that allowed in October 2020 the finalists to return and complete their studies. This has actually enabled most of those who are graduating today to be able to complete their studies. I'm sure that returning to studies for you who are graduating today after such an extended period of uncertainty has been a strange experience and not easy at all. We thank you for your positive attitude and hard work and the support by your sponsors and guardians. We also appreciate the staggered reopening for all the continu continuing students and hope and pray that as the situation gets better and safe to do so, our beloved government will consider full reopening of education institutions in due course when safe to do so. Given those circumstances, ladies and gentlemen, as part of keeping and attracting a committed workforce, we continue to empower both our staff and students through capacity building programs on the use and application of digital technologies in teaching and learning research and community outreach activities. And my appeal to the university staff is to seek for your continued understanding as you interface with new approaches and methodologies to your tasks and job-related activities. The time for yellow notes expired as soon as COVID knocked at the doors. Please update yourselves with the required skills and competences in order for you to be able to continue to serve in these turbulent times. We remain hopeful, though, that this situation is only but temporary. Resisting the digital change will only quicken your exit from the already shrinking job opportunities. On the same hand, I would like to say to our dear students, the continuing students, those who are not graduating and are in the system, we continue to address all your concerns and needs to sustain the now blended format of education and training that has become inevitable under the prevailing COVID-19 circumstances. I call upon our continuing students who are now faced with realities in accessing university education and training. There are challenges that require that you first adapt, you integrate you accept digital technologies, you come on board in terms of blended learning, open distance and in-learning, in order for you to remain up to speed with the demands and in tandem with maintaining quality. There are so many people who doubt what is happening, the approaches that are being used, 
at KIU, we have designed programs to mentor and ensure both staff and students cope with the new changes in the way they will be uptaking the academic programs. Of course, in the process, you may be faced with challenges such as internet access, acquisition of smart gadgets, and other socioeconomic constraints. However, as students who are enrolled in this great university, you must remain positively focused to reach what I term your finishing line in pursuit of your academic dream. All of you have dreams and you should not allow any diversion. These challenges are bound to happen, but the winners are those that overcome them with effort. We can't lay behind and wait for a miracle to happen. We must do something, and that something for now requires that we blend our practices with digital technologies by complying with the SOPs but continuing with education. The university will always be there for you, and therefore do not tire or lose hope in search of help and guidance from the appropriate academic and administrative units. You may also contact the Guild Union leadership to advance your needs and concerns. Now, when you read from the internet, you read through social media, it's as if COVID-19 came to shut down the entire world. At KIU, we are turning those challenges into opportunities. And for every challenge in life, there is usually a window for an opportunity. And that's exactly the approach we are using. I will just mention a few for the sake of time. Number one, in order to cope with the pandemic, rather than mourn over the situation of less physical interface with students and staff, we have upscaled our online digital platform. As a forward-looking institution, we have continued to improve the functionality of our online platform, which hosts the learning management system. Thanks to the additional investment provided by the Board of Trustees and NUFIC of the Netherlands through the Digital Innovation and Skills Hub project being implemented with KIU as one of the Dutch partners. Using the same digital platform, KIU will be hosting various courses of training and education to the youth and women in Ethiopia, South Sudan, Sudan, Somalia, and, uh, and, uh, and Sudan itself. A project will be running through the first quarter of 2022. We are therefore taking advantage of this gap, the issue of social distancing, the closure of schools. We are extending a hand to the neighboring communities. So that's an opportunity we have explored. The second opportunity, as you may remember, last August 2020, I announced the launch of the Vodan Africa project to which, as Vice-Chancellor of Kampala International University, I'm the President of the Implementation Network. You may wish to know that Vodan Africa is a partnership consisting of universities and hospitals in Uganda, Ethiopia, Liberia, Kenya, Tunisia, Somalia, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. It has recently attracted Asian partners because of its huge success. Today, our graduates, you wish to know how progressive your university is doing. Under this Vodan project, we have great news. A landmark contribution by KIU and her partners in addressing COVID pandemic and strategically any other potential health-related challenges that may come in the future. As part of the global efforts towards strengthening health care in clinics and hospitals in Africa, and with initial funding by Philips Foundation and subsequent financial support by the Dutch Development Bank and CODAID in The Hague, Netherlands, Vodan as a project under the stewardship of KIU as one of the Dutch partners has so far installed 10 COVID-19 machine actionable fair data points in the participating countries. Vodan Africa is pioneering the production of health data that are findable, accessible, 
interoperable and reusable at local hospitals and clinics across Africa and Asia. You who is listening to me and watching me may be wondering why this jargon. It is so important that data science is driving global agenda. And for us, we are applying fair data in order to be able to generate information that is useful for clinical observations and also research in the health. There's no other better time than this. So this is our second uh, project that we are taking advantage. I take this opportunity to thank Professor Miriam Van Rysen, the Vodan Global Coordinator, Professor Francisca Oladipo, the Vodan Executive Coordinator, and all our partners that I've already mentioned from universities such as Tangaza University College in Kenya, the Great Zimbabwe University, University de Sous in Tunisia, Mekele and Addis Ababa University in Ethiopia. In Nigeria too, we have the Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida University and the premier artificial intelligence hub, data science in Nigeria. As I speak, the Vodan Africa has attracted and has been listed eh, and gazetted by the UNESCO 2021 engineering report. We are so proud of this development. The third aspect of an opportunity we are exploiting under this COVID uh, situation is the KIU IGAD partnership. IGAD stands for the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. And recently, uh, I attended a big universities, the first IGAD universities forum held in Jigjiga University uh, in Ethiopia, to which we became members. KIU joined a host of other African universities, like the University of Khartoum, International University of Africa, based in Khartoum as well, and Jigjiga University, Addis Ababa University, and many others. Actually, more than 20 universities participated and were represented. I wish to say, this forum is so important, and KIU is stretching its wings in order for us to be able to remain relevant in these situations. The official launch of this forum also saw the official launch of the IGAD scholarship and award program. I am happy to announce that KIU will be giving scholarships to IGAD countries, and this is not a mean contribution. We think the IGAD is actually uh, covered with refugee and migrant communities for which we can contribute if we offer scholarships. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth and last but not least is the research and publications. We continue to offer opportunities. There are more than 23 research areas that are being undertaken by our staff during this COVID lockdown, and so many of them have actually been published. And for that, I want to appeal to our other institutions, to appeal to my colleagues in administration and in academics that we should not lose hope. Let's be careful, remain safe, but at the same time, explore. Let's use our schools and colleges to find out some innovative, novel approaches, technologies, interventions that can make a meaning during this COVID pandemic time. The graduates, welcome and congratulations. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are graduating 3,521 graduates who will become graduates after they receive their awards, out of which 61% are males and 39% are females. You may wish to know, ladies and gentlemen, that 47% of the graduates will be receiving science best awards. This is an increase of 4% compared to the August 2020 graduates. Now, this, the rest, 53%, of course, are in arts, humanities, business, education, and law. I'm glad to inform you that among the postgraduate students will be graduating three PhDs. Those will be detailed when they will be awarded. Overall, and we are pleased to announce that the Western Campus, KI Western Campus, has contributed 54% of the graduates. Probably this explains the reason why the science uh, graduates have gone up by 4%. I wish to gladly announce that out of these 3,000 plus graduates, 22 of them 
distinguish themselves above their colleagues by obtaining first class degrees. And they are Nyanzi James, Iga Steven, Raid Isma Wandera, Kawesa Joash, Kushara Kennedy, St. Pija Edward, Tumweba Ze Wilson, Nabimanya Norman, Nsubuga, uh, Charles, Oguta Christopher, Aruho Gerald, Migade Elias, Mutonyi Harriet, and Nangobi Wire Dennis, Juma Samuel, Hamsin, Ndagire Laila, Sekei Jacqueline, Sentamu Sam, Kamagara Fred, Atuto Emmanuel, Abo Veronic, Namutebi Jackie. I wish to quickly add that the 3,500 graduates are actually those who have been academically cleared by the Senate. And so we are likely to find some of them failing uh, to actually access the academic documents because they are yet to clear their finances and clearances that are outstanding. So this highlights another big challenge that whereas we are graduating students, some are actually failing to do uh, to access uh, their documents because they still owe the institution funds. I appeal to any donors, institutions, government and non-government to come to contribute to a scholarship fund of the university. As I conclude, I once again congratulate all the graduates for reaching this day. Please remember that you are graduating during very unpredictable times in which there are global crises of all sorts. This calls upon each one of you to adequately prepare to be, number one, reasonable, two, flexible, three, adaptable, four, logical, and finally, very, very understanding. When the hard times come, these are required. These are etiquettes of success. As you look around for a job, endeavor to retool yourself, not that what you have acquired from KIU is insufficient, but the world out there has different demands. There are realities that you will face. So I advise you retool yourself to fit in the world of work. If you ever get opportunities to upgrade, the doors of KIU remain widely open. As now a KIU alumni, we invite you to visit the Directorate of Human Resource to check for any opportunities of either employment or joining our vibrant staff development scheme where you may be taken up to start on an academic career or an administrative one. Stay safe and protect yourself against COVID-19 as you join the world of work. Let me now thank everybody who has been able to attend this graduation, the government of Uganda, the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria, uh, foreign embassies, local, regional, international, government and non-government organizations who are great partners and collaborators. I thank again the visionary board of trustees led by Dr. Hassan Basad Jabalawa, our chancellor, the council, the management team, our students, and everybody who has contributed to make this occasion a success. I cannot forget those who have spent sleepless nights and days working around the media teams, the people who have prepared for this graduation, and everybody else, our guardians, you have every reason to celebrate. I salute you all, and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Happy celebrations from KIU. gentlemen we are back we have just had wonderful words from our vice chancellor 
what a way, what wisdom, what a, what a world. We thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor, for those wise words, and I hope that the wise listened and they took something out of it. Right about now, I will invite our chairperson of the University Council, Professor Fred Wabwiri Mangeni, to address the congregation and also bless our students who are going out there into the world to start um, working out their lives and making sure that they put into action the knowledge that they have gained from KIU. Thank you very much, uh, Master of Ceremonies. Please allow me to remove my mask since I'm socially distanced. The Chancellor of Kampala International University, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, Cabinet Ministers here present, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Members of Parliament, Permanent Secretaries, Fellow Members of the University Council, the Vice-Chancellor of Kampala International University, Vice-Chancellors of other universities represented here, representatives of the various universities and organizations, staff of Kampala International University, distinguished guests, alumni, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the entire University Council and on my own behalf, I take this opportunity to congratulate all graduates and welcome all our guests and students who are virtually attending this memorable function. I recognize the challenges that we are still facing as a university uh, during uh, this COVID-19 season. It is my prayer that it ends soon to enable the university operations to resume back to normal. Today we are excited that we have managed to have this ceremony, which is the second of its kind in the history of Kampala International University and very innovative, for which we congratulate the Vice Chancellor and his management team. Today we are celebrating yet another big commencement from various academic programs at the level of PhDs, masters, bachelor's degrees, diplomas, and certificates. This is clear testimony of the great achievements and steady growth that the university is experiencing. As we celebrate today, KIU has been ranked the best private university in the East Africa region and the leading private university in Uganda, attesting to the wonderful infrastructure, the highly qualified and skilled human resources, and the studious students that have been trained here. As the University Council, we commend the incredible investments by the Board of Trustees, especially the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Al Haj Dr. Hassan Basanja Balaba. KIU is proud to have him as the Chair of the Board of Trustees and his entire team. Appreciation to the Vice Chancellor and University Management. I wish to acknowledge the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Mohamed Mpeza Mihigo and his management team for the visionary, dynamic, and able leadership, as well as the University Senate, academic and non-academic staff, students, strategic partners, and all key stakeholders for working tirelessly to enable KIU progress to a level where it is recognized as the best private university in the region. This year, 2021, continues to be a challenge with education institutions still suffering the larger part of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it has also been a time when the strength of most institutions has been uh, tested. The resilience that the university has demonstrated 
has shown that it can stand the test of time and still deliver the desirous services to the community, and for this, I commend you. As we navigate through this new and unpredictable situation, we appreciate the patience and hard work of all our partners and pledge our support as the University Council to make sure that KIU enriches what it has achieved so far and keep on taking very long strides in the higher education sector. To the graduates, we know that you would have preferred to be physically present for your graduation and have your parents, sponsors, guardians, and classmates physically witness your graduation like your predecessors. However, tough problems require innovative solutions, which justifies this virtual graduation. This new opportunity will allow you to go out and compete as you are supposed to without any delays. As a university, we have therefore created opportunities for you to go out there and compete in the global environment, get into the world to work and change it for the better. Therefore, receive my warm and hearty congratulations upon your graduation. Great thanks to the parents, guardians, sponsors, and all those who have made a contribution to your success at KIU. I wish you all the best in the next chapter of your life. Have blessed celebrations, and to emphasize, COVID is still with us. Sanitize, wear your mask, wash your hands in order to prevent further spread of this pandemic. I thank you for God and my country. our chairperson of council for addressing and blessing our congregation. I hope those who are at home are following and picking something from these wonderful words. And I hope that they will guide you in your life journey as you go out into the world to keep exploring the heights as our motto is. So without further ado, I would like to invite a very, very great person this is a person who envisioned what KIU would be before any of us thought about the KIU that we see today. And this is none other than the Chairman, Board of Trustees. He will today be represented by Mr. Ambrose Chibuka, who is a member of the Board. And I will request him humbly that after his speech, he will invite the Chancellor to come and address the, congreg the congregation. Thank you very much, and I hope you're still tuned in and still enjoying the graduation ceremony. The Chancellor, Kampala International University, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, Cabinet Ministers, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Members of Parliament, Permanent Secretaries, Chairman of the University Council, Kampala International University, and members of the University Council, fellow members of the Board of Trustees, the Vice Chancellor, Kampala International University, Vice Chancellors of other universities, representatives of the various universities and organizations, staff 
of Kampala International University, distinguished guests, alumni, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. I take the honor to welcome all of you to the second virtual graduation ceremony Kampala International University is holding. If anything, this is apparently a confirmation that indeed the new era has irreversibly taken root. For the most part, this new era has dictated upon us to operate in a very unfamiliar territory, yet expected to deliver results as though it was business as usual. And it is this context that compels me to heartily appreciate all those who have made extra effort to pull off this 23rd graduation ceremony despite the limitations and the challenges imposed by COVID-19. My message is captured in five short points. First, the new chancellor. In my remarks during last year's graduation ceremony, I welcomed Professor Mahmoud Mamdani as KIU's new chancellor. I did highlight that we were inspired by his outstanding international exposure and scholarly reputation as a seasoned researcher. We are confident that KIU will highly benefit from his insights as we grapple with realigning and repositioning the institution under the dictates of the new era in the COVID aftermath. <clears throat> Let me reiterate that KIU's strategic direction is to champion a new approach to higher education, a new approach that directs scholarly capabilities to the generation of innovative solutions to societal challenges. Our conviction is that this can only be achieved through a vibrant research culture. And once again, we welcome you, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, as our chancellor, and we trust that you are the right person to steer this institution as titular head to the future that we so desire to create. Second, effects of economic downturn. As we all know, COVID-19 disrupted everything. Private universities were severely affected. KIU, was no exception. With a strong strain on the cash flows, the Board of Trustees has had to suspend some aspects of the infrastructural development of the institution in order to meet the recurrent needs. This will have significant impact on the institution's growth plan as had been projected prior to COVID-19. Nevertheless, the Board of Trustees remains committed to transforming KIU into a world-class university. Number three, focus on electronic capabilities. In order to realign KIU with the imperatives of the new era, the Board of Trustees is now directing much of the strategic investments in developing the institution's electronic capabilities. This includes systems that enable administrative and academic management processes to be transacted electronically or virtually, research processes, as well as teaching and learning processes. All of these our vision is to ensure that they can be transacted virtually. With the support of a matching grant from NUFIC, Netherlands, 
establishment of a state-of-the-art e-learning studio is in advanced stages. Over 200,000 euros is being invested and the studio is said to be operational by August 2021. Once completed, the multifunctional studio will take care of the university's digital content development needs as well as professional recording and broadcasting. Number four, appreciation to the university council, management and staff. I wish to acknowledge and thank members of the university council who have stood with KIU through thick and thin. Many of you have been very supportive in different ways during the hard times imposed by COVID-19. You have always availed yourselves whenever called upon to transact the university's business, even when it meant the inconveniencing virtual meetings. In a similar vein, I thank management and staff of, for their dedication and sacrifice. KIU's high success rate in transitioning from the conventional face-to-face -face operations to the virtual mode attests to your commitment, despite the hard circumstances under which you operate. Holding this second virtual graduation ceremony is evidence of your flexibility and dedication. Thank you very much. Number five, appreciation to parents, sponsors, and the students. The general public, and in particular our students and their parents or guardians or sponsors, have been very strong in terms of supporting KIU's continued operation despite the hard circumstances. We thank you for exhibiting flexibility, patience, when we had to switch from the usual mode to virtual operations. I congratulate the graduating class for persisting through the hard times to see to it that you graduate. Needless to say, you enrolled into university during a COVID-free era, but now you are graduating into a COVID-sensitive job market. The lockdown and COVID-19 aftermath have taught you very useful adaptation skills. You have learned what it means to adjust and change your expectations each time it is necessary. With the knowledge and skills you have been equipped with, go out there and figure out how to adapt to any situation of life until you shine. In conclusion, the Board of Trustees appreciates all the stakeholders, including the relevant government ministries and departments, for the continued support and cooperation. We remain committed to developing KIU into a world-class university. We will continue exploring the heights. I thank you for God and my country. It is now my pleasure to invite the Chancellor of Kampala International University, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, to come and address the congregation. 
I congratulate you on a successful journey and on work accomplished. It warms my heart to see these flowing gowns. For over a millennium, these gowns have been a symbol of high learning from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic. Should anyone ask you where they come from or came from, tell them that the early universities of Europe, Oxford, Cambridge, La Sorbonne, borrowed them from the Islamic Madrasa of the Middle East. If they should seem incredulous, tell them that the gown did not come by itself, because medieval European scholars borrowed from the Madrasa much of their curriculum, from Greek philosophy to Iranian astronomy to Arab medicine and Indian mathematics, which is why they had little difficulty in accepting this flowing gown modeled after the dress of the Madrasa teachers, their symbol of high learning. Should they still express surprise, ask them to take a second look at the gowns of the Ayatollahs in Iran and Iraq and elsewhere, and they will see the resemblance. Now as then, education has no boundaries, neither does it have an end. As the Waswaili say, Elimu Hainamuisho. In the 15th century, the Europeans were on the periphery of the world system. Their journey to the center involved learning from centers of civilization, which in the 15th century included China, India, and North Africa. The Arabs and the North Africans were mainly intermediaries between Europe and the countries to the east. Whether they wanted silk from China, spices from India, or gold from West Africa, Europeans had to go through Muslim intermediaries. This explains the reasons for the European voyages of discovery from the 15th century. Each was a search for a way to go around the Arab or Muslim middlemen and find direct routes to supply centers in West Africa, India, China, and other places. <coughs> Europe has dominated the world for over five centuries. We are in an era when new powers are emerging, especially China, India, and Brazil in that order. They bring with them new ways of understanding the world, but their rise to dominance is pregnant with various and contradictory possibilities, including the danger of wars and the promise of new departures. If they are wise, they will understand that they cannot make this journey alone. To make the journey successfully, they will need to build alliances with those who have been marginalized by Western power. You need more than good words and promises to build alliances. You need to convince those you hope to partner that the change will also be in their interest. Rather than wait for them to define our interest for us, we need to do it ourselves. That is where we, including you, come in. The European story teaches us that one must stand on the shoulders of others, not claim to wipe the slate clean and start afresh. We have been under European tutelage for centuries, one century in some places, five in others. We have to sift through that experience, identify what is in our interest, but also keep, but also what keeps us from opening our eyes. At the same time, we need to open our eyes to the rest of the world, and not just inwards, nor just outwards, but also to our own past. Not so we, we may try and recreate that past, but so we may learn something from roads not taken. So we may create a new road that never existed before. Last time you graduated in the midst of a pandemic. This time you graduate in the aftermath of extreme violence, the violence of elections, which it seems are less and less about choice and more and more about compulsion and force. Many do not vote, why not? In America, most times nearly half the population the voting age population does not vote. Again, why not? 
In American political science, there has been a long-standing debate. Scholars ask, why does such a large proportion of the electorate abstain from voting? One side says, people do not vote because there is no choice. The other side says, people do not vote because they are satisfied, because they do not want change. It is likely that we have the same debate in today's Uganda. The 18th century German philosopher George Hegel has an answer to this situation. Institutions, Hegel says, are hard, cast in mortar and stone. Like buildings, institutions are not easy to move. And yet the ground underneath is always shifting, always moving. Since we cannot stop the ground from moving, the structure above, no matter how impressive it is, will crack sooner or later. So what's the lesson? Do we wait for the inevitable crack and then run for cover? Or do we build a shelter as we wait? There is no simple answer. But one thing we cannot do, which is just to close our eyes as if there is no tomorrow. This is bound to be your challenge beginning the day after graduation. much for those words of wisdom, our dear Chancellor, and we, I hope everyone has picked out something because it was very contextual, it was very uh, relevant to our current circumstances, and I hope that each one, wherever you are, you have at least taken out something, if not anything, but at least you've understood the significance of the gown that you are now wearing and donning, wherever you may be. So thank you very much, Chancellor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would like to introduce you our chief guest. Our chief guest is Professor Ronald de Jong, who is the chairman of the Philips Foundation that is in the Netherlands. Uh, as Kampala International University and as the, the vice chancellor and the chairman board have already uh, told you, we have our different uh, collaborations that we do with the Netherlands. And he has been one of those instrumental people who have helped us and who have enabled these collaborations happen and we have benefited a lot from that. So he has a lot of words of wisdom and I hope that you will enjoy listening to him. Please follow us on our social media pages and don't miss out. Wherever you are, pick a notebook and let him address you. He will be coming to us from uh, the Netherlands, where he is right now. He couldn't travel because of the COVID-19 situation, but I hope that you'll enjoy his speech. So, Professor Dijon, you're very welcome to address the congregation. Thank you very much. Dear Vice Chancellor, dear members of the Board of Trustees and the University Council, dear professors and members of the academic staff, distinguished guests, and of course, Dear graduate students, as we are gathered here today to celebrate your graduation, a major milestone in your life so far, and an important stepping stone towards the role you will be playing in society. My name is Ronald de Jong. I'm a professor at the School of Economics and Management at Tilburg University in the Netherlands, and I'm the founding chairman of the Phillips Foundation. I consider it a tremendous honor and privilege to speak at the 2021 virtual graduation ceremony today. Obviously, I would have loved to be together with you in person, but the travel restrictions due to the COVID pandemic prevented me from being with you today in Kampala. Ladies and gentlemen, higher education has a profound role to play in addressing societal challenges 
by educating the leaders of tomorrow. Kampala International University delivers a great contribution by developing the leaders of tomorrow and annually releasing graduates into the market. You are one of those students that just graduated from Kampala International University, the leading university in Uganda, and you are about to enter the labor market. My wish for you is to distinguish yourself in delivering services to your country and society at large. I'm confident you will do so. In my speech today, I want to share with you my reflections upon the big challenges society is facing, the role that universities, governments, businesses have in addressing these challenges, and the responsibility that you as future leaders have in contributing to a better world by leveraging your knowledge, experience, positive attitude and creativity. With respect to this last point, I will close off my speech by sharing some of the lessons that I learned in 30 years in business. Ladies and gentlemen, our world is facing many big and unprecedented challenges from an ecological, economic and social nature. These challenges are complex and interdependent. To give you a few facts, there is more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere than any time in human history today. Average wildlife has dropped by 60% in just over 40 years. The world's 2,000 billionaires have more wealth than the 4.6 billion people who make up 60% of the population on the planet. And the pressure on healthcare systems is growing. The COVID-19 pandemic has further painfully exposed the underlying weaknesses and vulnerabilities in society. And it has clarified the need for all public and private organizations to evolve into robust institutions to deal with predictive and also non-predictive natural or human-made disasters. This by teaming up and uniting a, uh, around a set of common goals. The Sustainable Development Goals as formulated by the United Nations in 2015 are a deep blueprint for achieving a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace and justice. Realization of the Sustainable Development Goals requires leadership. It forces leaders to rethink the role, responsibility and accountability of their organizations in society. Leaders in the private sector will need to take ownership for leading the transition towards a more fair and sustainable future by leading their organization within the means of what this planet and its people have to offer. The focus will have to be on creating social, economic and ecological value for and in harmony with a variety of stakeholders rather than just the creation of economic value for just a few and often at the expense of society at large. This idealism is realism. It is my strong conviction that leading a company responsibly based upon a clear purpose will ensure its long-term relevance in society and in addition to that secured its very existence. To substantiate this statement, the Business and Sustainable Development Commission, a group led by 35 CEOs and civil society leaders, released a report in 2018 and concluded that sustainable business models could open up new markets worth up to $12 trillion and create up to 380 million new jobs by 2030. In the public sector, taking responsibility for vulnerable countries is already taking shape through leaders fostering cooperation between governments, businesses, multilateral institutions, knowledge institutions and NGOs, which is paramount in establishing and maintaining a sustainable social protection system in Africa and other developing countries. As a member of the Advisory Council of International Affairs, we are advising the Dutch government on how the public and private sector can and should team up to strengthen social protection in Africa, as well as fostering digital readiness that will enable sustainable growth. As mentioned before, I'm also standing here as the chair of the Philips Foundation. The Philips Foundation is a registered charity established in 2014 founded on the belief that innovation and collaboration can help solve some of the world's toughest healthcare challenges for the underserved and make an essential impact. The Philips Foundation fulfills its mission by deploying the expertise and innovative products and solutions of Royal Philips, 
a leading company in healthcare technology. We also do this by collaborating with local governments, NGOs, and leading universities. Over 250 projects have been completed or are in progress throughout the world, to date in 2020. Over 40 projects as part of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, including providing critical health equipment and hospital capacity relief, supporting data and digitally driven innovation provision. On today's occasion, I would like to highlight a project we worked on together that showcases how the collaboration between the public sector, governments and NGOs can lead to profound societal impact. Last year, the Philips Foundation teamed up with the GoFair Foundation and Kampala International University to support the Virus Outbreak Data Network, a sharing system for COVID-19. This initiative connected Africa to the global effort to fight COVID and ensured that Africa's health professionals and data scientists are equipped to harness machine learning and discover meaningful patterns in epidemic outbreaks. Monitoring the health situation, trends, progress and performance of health systems requires data from multiple sources and on a wide range of health topics, ensuring the collection and use of reliable health data that will help evaluate inequalities and take actions that have implications. The data support clinical management of patients, disease monitoring, facility management, health sector planning and monitoring of services coverage and performance. In the wake of COVID-19, these data will be invaluable in evaluating the impact on health workforce, capacity and essential services to improve preparedness going forward. The Phillips Foundation is grateful for the collaboration with Kampala International University, proud of the results achieved so far and confident that we will further increase our joint impact given the many challenges at hand. After reflecting upon the role of universities, governments and businesses in the context of addressing the challenges of our times, I now come to the most important part of my speech. The role that you as future leaders can play. This is based upon my conviction that change only happens when we don't limit ourselves to statements like they need to change or we need to change. Real change only happens if individual people take ownership and responsibility. As promised, and in the context of this last point, I will share with you some lessons that I learned after 30 years in business, academic and public service. My first lesson for you is that you need to stay connected to the outside world. Keep an outside in perspective. Listen to all your external stakeholders and let them, and not your own internal organization, be the driving force of all you do. Welcome diverse views, be inclusive, and be aware of the risk of groupthink. Responsible leadership is about serving society and not only about serving the interest of your own internal organization. The second lesson is that you should not overestimate the value of strategy. Strategy should not be a straitjacket, but should give you a sense of direction. When executing strategy, I often experience that meaning is retrospective and that serendipity plays an important role. The recent COVID pandemic underlined the need for dealing in a flexible and agile way with unpredictable events. Given the exponential increase in speed of change, this point becomes more and more important. My third lesson for you is that when making choices, ensure you use your intuition next to facts and data. Fact-based and data-driven logic can give you a very plausible and acceptable justification to make the wrong choice. Things that really matter are often so complex that they become simple again. Dare to trust your intuition, as it is the result of accumulated knowledge and experience. It is rooted in your values that you got during your upbringing and education. Never compromise your values, as that is what you stand for as a person. My fourth lesson for you is dare to decide, make choices, choose or lose, pose as a, bi a bias to action. Go out and make things happen. My fifth lesson for you is that you need to anticipate the consequences of your choices for all relevant stakeholders. Please take note of their interests and weigh these carefully when coming to final decisions. Be purpose driven and apply judgment. Ask yourself what positive impact you would like to make and what legacy you want to leave behind. Success will be a logical consequence of finding and pursuing the answers to these questions. 
Remember that success is not only about winning, it is also about how you play the game. My sixth lesson is that you need to reckon with adversity. You need to be prepared to fail. If you fail five times, you need to stand up six. I cannot overestimate the importance of determination, tenacity and stamina enough. My seventh lesson is that you need to build and leverage authority and avoid using power. Power erodes. The more you use it, the more you lose it. Realize that positive attribution is far more impactful than persuasion when you want to drive change and transformation in people. Be true and respectful and treat people as you want to be treated yourself. This will contribute to your success and that of the organization that you serve. The eighth point is that you need to stay true to yourself. When making choices, stay true to who you are at the core, as an organization, as an institution, as a company, and as an individual. Trying to be something or somebody else erodes authenticity. Who you are at the core makes you unique and will continue to set you apart. Relevant companies are authentic companies and great leaders are authentic leaders. Last but not least, my last lesson, develop your own wisdom. The most important lesson is that you should challenge the lessons that are just shared with you. I encourage you all to develop your own wisdom, formulate your own lessons. In doing so, listen to your consciousness when confronted with difficult dilemmas. I'm sure that your soul knows the answers. Ladies and gentlemen, in my speech I've been reflecting upon the big challenges society is facing, the role that actors have to play and the responsibility that individuals have to take. Kampala International University plays its part by educating and developing the leaders of tomorrow, the fine young men and women whose graduation we celebrate today. Dear graduates, I congratulate you once more on your achievement. I wish you well for your future and hope that my words inspire you to serve society with your talent, your energy, your passion and your determination. Thank you for your... You think of a place where you will go to cut out your future. And when you get there, you realize there's a lot more to it. The beautiful structures, facilities and ambience. A place where you meet great minds, learn from each other, experience different cultures as well as master the art of fundamental problem solving. Be part of a whole different study experience with Kampala International University, KIU. Exploring the Heights.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from that short break. And I hope that you picked something from the guest of honor's speech that was very, very wonderful. I think those pointers, the different things that he talks about, at least if you didn't pick anything, I hope you understood the different things that will help you succeed in life as you go out. Right now, we are at a point that each person has been waiting for. So sit tight because our vice chancellor is about to come and make sure that you are conferred that degree that you have earned from Kampala International University. So the award ceremony will be led by the vice chancellor who is going to come and invite the principals and deans of different schools and colleges to come and present their graduates for receiving the different awards that they have worked so hard for. And it is going to be streamed in this way. As the college deans, as the college principals and deans read out the different departments and school names, the names are going to appear on the screen. The names are not going to be read out. So look out for your name, wherever you are. If you're a student, we are going to start with the Directorate of Higher Degrees and Research, which is going to start with our PhDs, our doctorate students who have completed and are graduating today. And then we shall go to the master's and then have the higher degree, the higher diplomas. Then from there, we shall have the College of Economics and Management, and then the Principal College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And from that, we shall have College of Education, Open and Distance Learning, and then School of Law. After which, I'll be here to tell you who will be awarded next. So please, do not go away. Keep live on Facebook, Kampala International University, at KU Varsity on our live handle, and at KU Digital Media on our YouTube live stream. Please do not miss seeing your name. Parents who have paid fees and are waiting, please tune in and make sure that you're able to see for yourself if your student graduated or if your child has graduated. Thank you and I hope you enjoy. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, please. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to ask the deans and principals of their respective schools, faculties, and colleges to present the persons for conferment of degrees, award of diplomas, and congratulations for certificates. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the Directorate of Higher Degrees and Research and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy both in character and in learning to be conferred upon doctorate degrees in management science. Manyange Nyansimi Michael. PhD in Management Science, Business Management Track, focusing on internal control system and financial accountability in county governments in Kenya. Mr. Manyange investigated the effects of internal control systems and financial accountability in county governments. He adopted descriptive cross-sectional and correlational designs with both quantitative and qualitative approaches. He analyzed data quantitatively using descriptive statistics. Correlating analysis was done using Pearson's linear correlation coefficient and at multivariate level, a multiple linear regression model was run. Whereas the qualitative data analysis was done using narrative thematic analysis, construct validity was tested using confirmatory factor analysis, Mr. Manyange's findings revealed that internal control system had a significant positive relationship with all elements of financial accountability. His study concludes that high levels of internal control systems in an organization 
lead to high level of financial accountability and vice versa. It's highly recommended that county governments in Kenya should prioritize implementation of both internal control systems and financial accountability. His supervisors were Associate Professor Eric Mabonga and Dr. Alonzi Buran. The next student, next graduate, Mr. Mugisha David Begumia. Mugisha David Begumia, PhD in Management Science, Public Management Track, focus on central local government relations, securing land rights in selected districts of Western Uganda. Mr. Mugisha examined the relationship between central local government relations and securing land rights in selected districts of Western Uganda since the promulgation of the Uganda National Land Policy. Mr. Mugisha employed a mixed method design and his regression analysis revealed that financial relations make a statistically significant unique contribution in the prediction of securing land rights. His study guides policymakers to give singular attention to financial relations while implementing the 2013 Uganda National Land Policy in securing land rights for the citizens of Uganda. His supervisors, Dr. Muchunguzi Abel and Dr. Chohairwe Stella. Thank you. The next graduate, Mr. Muhaise Hussein. Mr. Muhise Hussein, PhD Management Science, Management Information Systems Track, focusing on model for the electronic health management information success, verification from the greater Bushenyi districts in Uganda. Mr. Muhise investigated factors that, have, that account for electronic health management information system success within the context of developing countries. He devised a success model in which was informed by the DeLon and McLean model of information systems effectiveness. Mr. Muhise used the concurrent transformative mixed designs to collect data from health facilities in the greater Bushenyi area. Data was analyzed using the constant cooperative method an electronic health management information system success model was developed, evaluated, and validated. His findings indicated that external factors such as resource supply, management support, education, and training in addition to the infotech artifact quality parameters influence the success of electronic health management information system in the developing countries. Mr. Muhise, therefore, recommends that policymakers should adapt the validated model in order to ensure visualization of electronic health management information systems effectiveness. His supervisors were Professor Johnny Wycliffe Zake Mwanga and Dr. Margaret Carreo. Mr. Chancellor, sir. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon all those persons whose names have been presented the respective Doctor of Philosophy of Kampala International University. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the Directorate of Higher Degrees and Research and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy 
both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon master's degrees and postgraduate diplomas. Master of Business Administration, Master of Arts in Human Resource Management, Master of Arts in Economics, Master of Arts in Economic Policy and Planning, Master of Educational Management and Administration, Master of Arts in Linguistics, Master of Arts in Human Rights and Development, Master of Arts in Conflict Resolution and Peace Building, Master of Arts in International Relations, Master of Arts in Project Planning and Management, Master of Arts in Counseling Psychology, Master of Laws, Master of Science in Computer Science, Master of Science in Information Technology, Master of Science in Chemistry, Master of Science in Pure Mathematics, Master of Science in Environmental Management, Master of Science in Pediatrics, Master of Public Health, Master of Science in Water Resources and Environmental Engineering. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon all those persons whose names have been presented the respective master's degree of Kampala International University. Postgraduate Diploma. Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration. Postgraduate Diploma in Human Resource Management. Postgraduate Diploma in Educational Management and Administration, Postgraduate Diploma in Development Studies, Postgraduate Diploma in Public Administration, Postgraduate Diploma in Project Planning and Management, Postgraduate Diploma in Construction Project Management, and Postgraduate Diploma in Electro Electrical Engineering. Mr. Chancellor Sir. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I award all those persons whose names have been presented the respective postgraduate diploma of Kampala International University. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the College of Economics and Management and by authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy both in character and learning 
to be conferred upon their respective degrees and awarded diplomas. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the School of Natural and Applied Sciences and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas.
Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy both in character and in learning uh, to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas. Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the School of Mathematics and Computing and by authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who've been found worthy both in character and learning to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas.
Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the College of Education, Open and Distant Learning, and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause, who have been found worthy in both character and in learning to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas.
Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the School of Law and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon the degree of Bachelor of Laws and the Diploma in Law. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the Faculty of Biomedical Sciences and by the authority of the Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following person for sufficient cause, who had been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon respective degrees. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the Faculty of Clinical Medicine and Dentistry and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery and Bachelor of Dental Surgery of Kampala International University.
Minister Chancellor Sir, I now call upon the newly qualified doctors to take the Hippocratic Oath. I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this promise. I do solemnly and sincerely declare that as a graduate of the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry of Kampala International University, I will exercise my professional knowledge and skills to the best of my ability for the benefit of all people committing themselves or committed to my care, regardless of their individual status or standing. I will not knowingly or intentionally do anything or administer anything to cause harm, to show prejudice or to gain personally from people in my care. Above all, I will not play God. With great humility, I would respect the privacy of my patients and shall keep silent about anything I have seen or heard in the practice of my profession, which it will be wrong to divulge. I will remember that the practice of healthcare is both an art and a science, and that warmth, empathy, and understanding may outweigh any other intervention. I will assist patients to make informed decisions and I will respect these decisions. I will endeavor to earn and keep the right trust of my patients and colleagues by acting honestly and fairly, working as a multidisciplinary team and continually sharing and improving my knowledge and skills. And finally, I will remain a member of society, never forgetting my past relations to all my fellow human beings. I make this vow freely and upon my honor. Mr. Chancellor, sir, in the name of the School of Allied Health Sciences and by the authority of the Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy, both in character and in learning, to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas.
Mr. Chancellor, sir, permit me to call on the graduates for the Bachelors of Clinical Medicine and Community Health to take the oath for allied health professionals. Oath for allied health professionals. I, Nakuya Ramla, swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment my duties and responsibilities as an allied health profession. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who I follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic hinderism. I remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding will outweigh the surgeon's knife and the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not. Nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the schools of another person are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients for their problems are not disclosed to, the, to me for the world to know. Most especially must I trend with the care in matters of life and death. If it is given to me to save a life, all oh thanks. But it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. Above all, I must not pray with God's creation. I remember that I do not treat a fever chart a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes those related to problems if I'm to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent diseases whenever I can, for prevention is better than cure. I remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings who, whose sound of mind and body as well as mental ill ones. If I do not violate this oath, I may enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. So help me, God. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon all those persons whose names have been presented the respective bachelor's degrees of Kampala International University. Mr. Chancellor, sir, Permit me to call on the graduates for diploma in clinical medicine and community health to take the oath for allied health professionals. I, Samba Pauline, swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment my duties and responsibilities as an allied health professional. I will respect and hard won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I take and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to the medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, 
and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say I know not. I will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I treat with care in matters of life and death. If it is given to me to save a life, all thanks, but it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own Above all, I must not play with God's creation. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a counselor's growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes those related problems if I am to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferably to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings. The sound of mind, body, as well as the mentally ill ones. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected where I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. So help me God. Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the School of Pharmacy and by the authority of the Senate of Canberra International University, I have the honor to present the following persons in sufficient course who have been found worth both in character and in learning to be conferred upon respective degrees and awarded diplomas.
Mr. Chancellor, sir, let me take this opportunity and I invite the pharmacy graduates to take their oath. As a pharmacist, I vow to serve humanity and support my profession's ideals and commitments. I shall be guided in all dimensions of my life by the highest standards of human conduct. I shall apply the full measure of my knowledge and abilities to supporting the health and well-being of all those I serve. I shall always place the needs of all those I serve above my personal interests and considerations. I shall treat all those I serve equally, fairly, and with respect, regardless of gender, race, ethnicity, religion, culture, or political beliefs. I shall protect the confidentiality of personal and health information entrusted to me. I shall maintain my professional knowledge and competence throughout my career. I shall support the advancement of knowledge and standards of practice in pharmacy. I shall nurture the preparation of future members of my profession. I shall use all opportunities to develop cooperative practice with all healthcare professionals in my environment. In taking this, this solemn oath, I honor those who have supported my development as a pharmacist and commit myself never to act in a manner that is contrary to those vows. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon all those persons whose names have been presented the respective bachelor's degrees of Kampala International University. I Nakaiwa Jane swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment my duties and responsibility as an allied health professional. I respect the hard won work scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the best of the sick all measures which are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not. Nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, I trained with the care in matters of life and death. If it is given me to save a life, all thanks but it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility might be faced with great humbleness and awareness of all my own frailty. Above all, I must not play with God's creation. I remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility include, includes these related problems if I'm to care adequately for the sick. I'll prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferably to cure. I remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings whose sound mind and body as well as the mentality illness ones. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling and may I long to experience 
the joy of healing those who seek my help. So help me God. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I award all those persons whose names have been presented their respective diplomas of Kampala International University. Mr. Chancellor Sir, in the name of the School of Nursing Sciences and by the authority of Senate of Kampala International University, I have the honor to present the following persons for sufficient cause who have been found worthy both in character and in learning to be conferred upon the respective degrees, awarded diplomas, and congratulated for certificates. Mr. Chancellor, sir, I have the pleasure to invite the Diploma in Nursing, Certificate in Nursing, Certificate in Comprehensive Nursing, and Certificate in Midwifery Graduates to take the professional oath. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in Trinity and practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deterious and mischievous and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of this profession and will with reality 
endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. Do you solemnly swear that you'll be just and generous to all other members of your profession, aiding them when it will be in your power to do so? Yes, I do. That into whatsoever house you shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of your power, and that you hold yourselves distant from all temptation? Yes, I do. That whatsoever you shall see or hear of the lives of men and women, whether they be your patients or members of their households, you will keep invariably secret, whether you are in the other households or among your own friends. Yes, yes I, I do. I wish you the best as you join the nursing fraternity. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I confer upon all those persons whose names have been presented the respective bachelor's degrees of Kampala International University. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I award all those persons whose names have been presented the respective diplomas of Kampala International University. By virtue of the powers vested in me, I congratulate all those persons whose names have been presented the respective certificates of Kampala International University. And gentlemen, as I already told you, we are still at Kampala International University in Kansanga at our main campus in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. We are, we are happy to have our international audience, alumni who are in different parts of the world who have been attending this graduation ceremony. So we, have, we are almost at the close of this ceremony and I want to thank you for hanging in there, for staying with us, for staying tuned in and following us on our Twitter handle at KIUVersity, on our YouTube live stream at KIU Digital Media, and on our Facebook page, which is live at Kampala International University. The names that have been displayed are the names of those students who have graduated from Kampala International University at this 23rd graduation ceremony. So they are now graduates, and we congratulate you. I hope someone somewhere gives you a hug, someone who is close to you at least gives you a hug and congratulates you for this journey that you have traveled. So as we said, as we did in the beginning, the chancellor constituted the congregation. And in order for us to close peacefully and legitimately, the chancellor must close, must dissolve his congregation. So for that reason, therefore, I will invite the chancellor to dissolve the congregation, after which we shall have the anthems that will be played, and then we shall go to the procession, leaving the grounds. So thank you very much and uh, welcome. I welcome the Chancellor. By virtue of the authority vested in me, I hereby declare this assembly dissolved. Kampala International University, you are the touch, the Christ of all. In you we see a future Christ and by you. Yes. Yeah.
Gentlemen, we have come to the close of our graduation ceremony. I want to thank you all who have been with us, the audience that has been live on our social media pages, the audience that is at home on Urban Television, and those who have managed to be here with us. I want to thank you for taking off your time and being with us and celebrating with us another milestone for us as KIU as we go out to explore the heights. So I congratulate all those students who graduated today and their parents for the support that they have given. And I especially want to thank our chief guest, our Professor Ronald De Jong, who joined us from the Netherlands, our Chancellor, Professor Mahmoud Mamdani, our Chairman, Board of Trustees, Al Haj Dr. Hassan Basaja Balaba, our Chairman of the University Council, Professor Fred Wabure Mangeni, and our very dear Vice Chancellor. Dr. Muhammad Bezan Higo. I want to thank you for making time. I want to thank you for being here with us. And I want to thank you for guiding us as we visualize, as we visualize together what exactly we want for KIU. So for now, as the procession of the Chancellor leaves the grounds, I want to thank those who are at home and to congratulate our dear graduates, our dear graduates on this uh, milestone that they have achieved. For you seated at home, or for those who are watching, this might be something simple. Maybe it has happened in your life so many times that you have, you have forgotten what it feels like to achieve your first degree. But all of us who have walked this journey 
nor the excitement that comes with an academic achievement. Irrespective of what is out there, it does not take away the fact that you have achieved something, a huge milestone in your life. And therefore, for the parents who supported these students, I congratulate you too. These degrees might have been earned by your children, but without your support, it wouldn't have happened. For the lecturers and the administrators at KIU, I want to thank you that if these students had been sent to KIU and you had not done your part, today would have all been in vain. Therefore, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you, the parents, the KIU administration, and everybody who has watched us. And thank you for being with us. I want to say thank you. Muebale nyo, muebale mnonga, muebale ino. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Sean. And goodbye from me. I've been Janice, your host, and I hope next it will be not a, live cer a virtual ceremony, but a live ceremony where we can kiss and hug each other and congratulate each other in person. So take care and stay safe from COVID-19. We may be disabled in our by COVID-19, but we are not completely disabled. We can still have this and we can still enjoy it. I remain Janice. Goodbye and take care of yourselves. God bless you. where you will go to cut out your future and when you get there you realize there's a lot more to it the beautiful structures facilities and ambience a place where you meet great minds 
learn from each other, experience different cultures as well as master the art of fundamental problem solving. Be part of a whole different study experience with Kampala International University, KIU, Exploring the Heights. of a university you think of a place where you will go to cut out your future and when you get there you realize there's a lot more to it the beautiful structures facilities and ambience a place where you meet great minds learn from each other experience different cultures as well as master the art of fundamental problem solving be part of a whole different study experience with Kampala International University, KIU, Exploring the Heights.